Hi, welcome to my studio. I'm Barbara Swift and you're watching The Swift Art. In today's video, I'm going to show you something very helpful if you're a beginner and it's called the milk scale or that's what I call it anyway. I don't know if I really made that up but I've heard different terms used for the same thing but what we're talking about is how much water and how much pigment or watercolor paint you mix together to get the desired effect. So I'm going to go through all my little dairy levels there, if you will. And I'm also going to show you different brands of paint and how they compare with the same color. And also what types of watercolor paint they are. So if you're advanced or intermediate, then you probably know this like the back of your hand. But for beginners, it's kind of a struggle at the beginning. Because the hardest thing to do is to learn how to control your paint and control your water. So I call watercolor painting, painting with tinted water. So I'm going to show you how much tint to put in your water to get control of your painting. Okay, so here we go. A really handy thing to know when you're painting with watercolor is how much paint to put in your water puddles. So the puddles are the mixture that you're mixing on the side of your paint and water. And there's a different thicknesses going all the way from instant milk, skim milk, whole milk, half and half, heavy cream, and yogurt. That's my dairy scale for painting. So you can see this paint that I just mixed is very, very transparent. So this one I'm calling instant milk. You know how you go over some of your friend's house when you were a little kid and they had a big family and the mom would water down the milk so everybody had some? That's what I call instant milk. You can see right through it. So that's what this is. So it's much more water and just a little tiny bit of the pigment. So that is the instant milk and very, very transparent. You could use this for just gentle touches, for glazing over something you want just a tiny bit darker or just to put just a hint of color on your paper. That's where you would use the instant milk consistency. So I'm going to write that down here, instant milk. Okay, so the next one is skim milk. So with the skim milk, you can still see through it, but not as much as watered down instant milk. So I'm going to put a little bit more pigment in that same puddle. So now you can see that when you run your brush through it, you can see down through the bottom of the palette, and it's transparent. So I have just a little bit more water. Yeah, that's better. So we got that transparent um, kind of consistency, but yet it, you can still see that it's not totally transparent. But it's very thin, so it's still more water than it is pigment. So I'm just going to give you a sample here of that, and you can compare it to the instant milk. It's much darker, much more color in there. So let's write that down. This is skim, skim milk. Okay. Now the next one we're going to go for is whole milk. Now whole milk, you're going to get a lot more coverage and a lot brighter color. So I'm going to add more color to my puddle. And you can see when I'm running my brush through it, I'm not really seeing much of the palette underneath. It's pretty solid, but it's just a little bit transparent still. So I'm going to give you a little circle of that and to kind of show you what that looks like. This is what you would use when you're doing like a wet on wet technique um, because the water that's already on the paper is going to add water to your um, paint that you're putting on. So this is good for that and you'll get the look of the skim milk when you do that. So you use it for all kinds of things, wherever you want more intense color. So now I'm moving on to half and half. So half and half is even thicker than regular whole milk. So I add a little bit more pigment there and you can see when I'm brushing it on, um, I didn't get too much of a difference. So I'm gonna add a little bit more pigment to it. There we go. See now that's what I'm looking for where you don't see through it at all really just just barely you see through it. So when you're adding 
thicker paint, like to wet on wet or something that's semi-dry, um, and it's still damp, the thicker paint isn't going to have as much movement in it. If you added the instant milk or the skim milk, it would just travel throughout everywhere where it's wet. So when you only want it to be like in a little bit of an edge, but you still want it to spread and be soft and blend very well, this is where, this is where you'd use that. So this one here is heavy cream. I added even more pigment to this one. And I see I have to actually kind of fill it in and, um, you know, spread it more. So this is pretty thick, heavy cream. So this you could use um, for more detailed work. So like you want to outline something or do like the eye where you don't want it to spread at all. This isn't going to spread at all. This is heavy cream. And then you can even go a step further and get more of a consistency like yogurt. So I'm pretty much just using the paint, just barely wet enough to move it at all. But you can see when I go to paint it on, it's much harder to paint it on. I have to spread it like I am, you know, like yogurt or something like that. And I don't use this kind of paint too much, but if you wanted to do a dry brush technique, um, this would be good for that because it's not going to flow into the paper and the little texture of the paper. It's going to sit right on the top. So there you go. Those are my milk stages. So if you think about them like that, then um, it's pretty easy to remember because they're all some sort of milk, right? And you can just use your common sense and think, okay, which one is heavier than the other one? So that's, I'm going to show you now, um, kind of what they look like on the paper. So I'm going to do a little wet on wet technique here so you can see how they kind of flow and spread and what color that they end up. So this is the consistency of instant milk. So I'm going back, adding water to my little puddle. And you can see when you drop it in there, it's going to move. It's moving in that wet water. And if you left it there long enough, it would continue to keep moving. I'm just going to dab a little bit more in here so you can see what it looks like um, once you have it on your paper. And as I'm moving my brush through it, it's also soaking up into my brush. It's just so thin that it'll um, follow whatever water source it has. So I'm going to show you the skim milk. So I'm just putting some water here on my paper like I did before. And then I'm just going to Take a little bit of this thicker paint and make it darker. Keep adding a little paint until I get that um, where you run your brush through it. It's still transparent. It's not opaque at all. Now you can see it's a little darker. It's still moving in that water. It'll still spread, but you're going to get more of an intense color. So it's still spreading, and if you left it there, it would probably just continue to spread until all the water dried up. Now this one is the whole milk. So I'm doing the same thing, adding some water. And I'm going back to my little puddle here. And I'm adding just a bit of water. I want to see some of those transparent bits when I run it through the palette. But it's also going to see a lot of the thicker, heavy paint as I move it around. I'm just dabbing that in. Now you can see much more color and see how it's moving slower than the others. So it still moves wherever the water is, but it's moving a little bit more slowly. And this is the half and half, starting out the same way with a little bit of water. And now I'm adding some paint to it, and it's pretty thick. Pretty thick paint there. And now see, when you drop that in, it's much more intense. And it's staying more where I'm dabbing it in. It's not spreading as rapidly. And we'll do the heavy cream. The heavy cream is, you know, probably more pigment than water. And pretty opaque. When I run it through on the palette, it's still pretty opaque. You can barely see the palette underneath it. Add a little bit more, and now it's dabbing in there. Yes, much more color, and that's about done spreading. 
It's a little spread, but it's going to stay, spread slower. So it depends on how much water you have underneath it, too, how much it'll spread. And then the yogurt. So I'm going to put the water underneath there. And then just dip my brush directly into that paint right there and just work it into my brush off to the side. So that's enough water already in there. There we go. And now this is going to be as intense as you can get it. It's going to look pretty much like the color coming right out of the tube. You can see how it gets darker, starting at its lightest on the left side all the way down. Now I'm just going to take my brush with some water in it and just spread it out. So I'm going to go right from the top there and spread it down so you can see how it looks once it's all spread out with a little bit more water. So that'll change the color of it a bit. Bring it down. And this is how I would do a little paint chip so I can test my paints and see what color they're going to be. I'd make something like this. Now, so you can see that one's border is a lot more clear than the one prior to it. And then the same with the half and half, more distinct. You can see where those brush moved much easy, easier. And then the heavy cream. I think I should put a little bit more paint in that heavy cream one. It wasn't quite as thick as it should have done. And then the yogurt. And the yogurt, you really got to kind of scrub it down there to make it move as much. Yeah, I'll put a little bit more in there so you can get a fair judgment of that. Yeah, that's better. That's better. A little bit more on that yogurt one, too, there. Yep. Almost full paint right out of the two. So there, that's one color. But you can see we went from soft pinks all the way to a bright red. So just with that one color. Now I'm going to draw a line with my Sharpie or my Micron pen that's waterproof. Just so you can see what they look like when you put it over the top of something. So I'm using my permanent red Magello Mission Gold paint. It's the same color as I used it, the one on the top there. And it says on the side there that it's a transparent paint and that it's non-staining. So non-staining means you can pretty much wipe it up, mop it up, you know, lift it out, and it won't stain the paper underneath. And it means transparent means that you'll see that you'll still see that line, that black line. So when you put it over the top of something else, it's transparent. It's see-through. So I'm going to go ahead and make like a, a whole melt consistency here. Just mix it up here and then I'm just going to draw or paint a brush stroke over that black line so that you can see how see-through it is. So that black line is very clear. So there's different kinds of paint. There's transparent. The next one we're going to use is a semi-transparent. And then there's a, um, opaque paint. So this one here is Rose Matter. And it's also the Magello Mission Gold. And I'm sorry, you can't see that, can you? It's hard to get the camera to start focusing for you. <laughs> Okay, so with this one, this one is a semi-transparent, and I'm going to make me a little puddle of that. It's the one I have here. And there's granulated, granular paint. It has um, little specks in it, and then there's a super granulated paint. So I'm going to show you all of those. So let's mix in my puddle here. Now I'm going to paint it down. Now this color is a different color because it's got more blue in it. It's more cooler. But you can see, you can still see through it. But it's a little bit more opaque than, um, than the previous one. Uh, 
Okay, so we're gonna got a little speck there. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter. <laughs> you can you already have seen it. You can see what the staining paints do. <laughs> I have rubbed my arm in it, so the bottom of my arm is stained up. <laughs> and this is Prussian blue, and this one is a staining, and it's semi opaque rather than semi transparent. So you can still see through it a little bit. You can still see through it. So I have some on my palette here that I'll show you. I'll mix me up a little puddle and we'll paint this one over the black line. So it's a little, you know, dark, dark blue. So it's almost like a nice navy blue. And we'll try to mix it the same consistency as I did the other two. So that it's more like a whole milk. So the color's gonna make a difference too is how well you see the black line because it's the blue is closer to black than the pink one is. But you're, you'll see that it is still just a little bit thicker and you can't see it quite as clearly. And that looks pretty good right there. So let's put that line down. See that, how thick that, that paint is the same thickness, you know, as far as paint to water, but you can see that you don't see through it quite as much. It is kind of a fine line because with all the watercolors, you can water them down and make them more transparent. Now this is called permanent white. And this is a, an opaque paint. So this is something that you could come back with and put highlights in. Um, the Bleed Proof White that I use in all my videos, just about that's this kind of paint here. And you can see when you paint it over, you hardly can see that black line at all. It'll just erase it completely. Okay, so that's the different types of paint that there are. So there's transparent, semi-transparent, semi-opaque. And your paint also differs between brands. So these are both cerulean blue. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but it's kind of a sky blue. But I have a Daniel Smith and I have a Magello Mission Gold. So they're both kind of the same tone or same color but one is way more intense than the other so the Daniel Smith is a beautiful color for making clouds but here's the Magello uh, Mission Gold Cerulean Blue they're both a beautiful sky blue but this one's a little bit more bright a little bit more cheerful I guess where Daniel Smith's is a little more muted a little softer more natural color so I have Daniel Smith and all kinds of different brands of paint because of um, what kind of effect I'm looking for. So you can see there, it's almost like it's a grayed down version and the other one's more turquoisey, but they're still named the same thing. So that's something to watch out for when you're buying paint. Um, just because it has the same name doesn't mean it's going to be the exact color. They won't match exactly, but they're both the same name. So different brands, same name, different colors. Whoops, sorry, there's my text message. So this is a cobalt blue, and this is by Daniel Smith. And I just wanted to show you, it's almost in between these two colors. And it has... A little bit, um, like it's not a real dark blue. I'll show you here. Let me mix up a little puddle of this. I'll show you what color this is. This is a really pretty one for the the skies. But just to show you, a, they're similar, but they're not the same. And the, the cerulean blue, the one in the middle, is Daniel Smith. And now that it's starting to dry, you can see those little grains of paint coming to the surface. That's the granular paint. So that in Daniel Smith, but in Magello Mission Gold, 
it doesn't have that granulation. So even though they're the same color. Now these paints, um, this is by Sh Schminky, and they are super granulated. So the cobalt blue also is a granulating color. And as it dries, you'll see these little specks coming to the surface. And then I'm going to use a blue from the Schminky because that one is super granulated. And you can really see the texture of the paper, all those little grains settle down in the texture of the paper. And it's really cool, especially for different like nature effects. Um, it can be a lot of fun to use. And they come in, I got three colors of that. They're kind of expensive, so I just bought three little tiny baby tubes of it just to play around with them, and I think that they're beautiful. Of course, I went for the blues and purples because that's me. <laughs> but yeah, so now you can see, even before it dries, you can see that granulation kind of settling in and the little, little speckles in there. So it gives your painting texture. So I'll show you the three colors that I got here. So that one, um, this one is the more turquoisey blue. So the first one was called, what is it called? Uh, T-I-E-F-S-E-E, -E -E, Grift, Deep Sea Green. And now this one here is the deep sea blue. So you can see they're just a, a shade off, but when they dry, you know, they dry a little bit more darker than it looks here. I'm going to put a little bit of water in between because they kind of have a little color shift to them. So I want to see if I can't bring a little bit of that shift out. Kind of turn it on its side and coax it to, to bleed over there. I might need have to use more paint to get that color shift. But it kind of shifts into um, kind of more on the purpley side. And then this last one is a purple. And it is called deep sea violet so I got the deep sea three here going on <laughs> and it's really a dark one you can see it bleeding into the water that I have on the side there so it gives a nice little feathery edge to it I think that's really pretty so I'm excited to use these in some of my paintings especially in the backgrounds I think it'll make beautiful background and this one because it's darker I got a look you can really see the granulation in there. So that's uh, one way to do a granulated paint. There's also a medium that you can use that's by Windsor Newton. And it's just granulation medium. And you can put that right into your paint. And that'll also make them have that granular effect. But not as much as a super granulation. So there you have all your different milk levels, instant milk, skim milk, whole milk. Then you get into the more opaque ones, half and half, heavy cream and yogurt. And there's what they look like once they're spread out with some water underneath them. So I thought that might be interesting. All this comes with practice. You know, the more you use your paint, the more you'll understand how heavy, how much pigment to put in it, and you'll, how, you know, you what for whatever effect that you want, I guess is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> and then there's your blues, your two ceruleans, and that cobalt, and the granulation. So you can see that they're settling in, especially, look at that dark one on the end. Really can see it in there. That's pretty. You can see that shift where it's shifting to a blue a little bit as it's drying. So those are really fun to use. So those are your types of paint and how much you should use to get what effect you're looking for. Okay. All right. So 
I'm just showing you there's some the difference between the granulation so it's more granulated with the super granulated paint than the cobalt blue but the cobalt blue has a lot of or not cobalt the cerulean has a lot of granulation in it all right so i hope that you enjoyed this video and i'll show you a few of these paints now the different brands that i have so i i use all of these this is schmink schminky <laughs> and daniel smith and the mission gold in my videos, I use a lot of the Mission Gold because I have the smaller palette that fits in. Um, but then there's also, um, um, what you call them, Winsor Newton paints. And I have some more in my box here. So this one's Master's Touch. That's Hobby Lobby's brand. I like all of these paints. They all um, offer me um, some benefit, and I use them different ways the soho and core so i like them all and those are the ones that i have but i sure that you know i'll be trying some i have holbein too somewhere that's a nice cerulean blue that's one of my favorites but thank you for watching my video hope you got something out of it and you learned a little bit for those who didn't know this already so i want you to be happy be joyful, be creative, peace and love be with you every day. And I thank you again for watching my video. Okay, bye-bye. See you next time.